This is what life should be like for Gibbons. But tragically, this is where a lot of them end up, in the illegal tourism and pet trades. This is the story of dedicated people committed to giving these primates their lives back. Gibbons live in the forests of Southeast Asia. Perfectly adapted to a life in the treetops, these apes rarely come to the ground, and their distinctive calls can be heard from miles away. All but one species of gibbons are threatened or endangered. Habitat loss is one reason. The other is poaching for traditional medicine and both the pet and tourism trades, all of which are having devastating consequences on gibbon populations. This is a rehabilitation center for gibbons in Phuket, Thailand. All the gibbons here have been rescued from the pet and tourism trades, and they've all got tragic stories. Like this female gibbon named Tam. Tam came here with one hand, two finger, and one leg. She was a pet to be someone on her family. And then after that, the owner hit her, hit her with a uh, stick. And then after that, they, they brought her to the, to the doctor. The doctor said he had to cut the hand and leg for Tam. Tam has only two fingers on her remaining hand, and she struggles to hold things. So her food has to be cut into small pieces. She's also prone to infections. So after every feed, special powder is rubbed into her joints to keep them dry. Because of this, Tam can never be released. Sadly, Tam is just another statistic. She was most likely poached as a youngster and the rest of her family killed. Poachers don't want fully grown gibbons. They want the babies. And it's estimated that for each baby captured, an average of 10 gibbons are killed. Center volunteer Abby explains. They would kill the father because the father's obviously going to be protective of, of his family. Um, and um, juveniles um, are unpredictable. Um, and also, they're not needed. They, they would kill the mother because they need um, the baby to come down from the canopy. Um, and the baby's going to be clinging to the mother for the first couple of years. And um, so this is why um, so many uh, are killed just for that one baby. Another sad case is Tina. She was rescued from the tourism trade. Unfortunately, she's developed cataracts, a common consequence of exposure to flash photography. After many visits to the vet, it's been established that unfortunately, Tina will most likely become blind. So she and her family are being taken back to the sanctuary, courtesy of local philanthropic group, the Flying Scouts. Gibbons are monogamous and form strong family bonds, which is why the whole family has been moved together. they'll be cared for here at the sanctuary for the rest of their lives. But it's not always doom and gloom. There are happy endings too. In the past few years, the Gibbon Rehabilitation Project has successfully released over 20 gibbons back into the wild. Remarkable considering that all of them were brought up in captivity. These two gibbons are getting ready for their release. Because of their close family bonds, when gibbons are rescued, they're paired off and only once they've had a baby will be released. This way, they're a family unit and will look out for each other in the wild. We, we don't know yet, yeah. we, have, uh, we have to wait until they have the baby. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a female. <laughs> try to protect that side, try to protect their territory. Yeah. <laughs> but waiting for Gibbons to conceive is not as easy as it sounds. 
they are couple quite long time yeah but no baby yeah um why no baby because of the male always have sex uh, on the female leg yeah yeah <laughs> it's a fun story for them yeah thankfully this particular problem is rare and when gibbon families are ready to be released the Flying Scouts are again on hand to relocate them to one of the dedicated Gibbon Reserves in Chiang Mai, Northern Thailand. The future really for these animals is going to be in Chiang Mai. We have a huge tract of land up there. We have a village which is very conservation friendly, very committed to looking after the Gibbons. That village really is a success story in its own right. Uh, they are originally hunters turned gamekeepers and they're passionately um, protecting the gibbons up there now. They, they feed them, they look out for them. On arrival in Chiang Mai, the little family will first undergo what is known as a soft release, living in an enclosure on the outskirts of the forest that will be their new home in a few months. And they'll stay in that enclosure for around three months, being fed forest food so they know what to feed on when they're released. And, um, just acclimatising to their new surroundings. The best part going into the forest and actually seeing them uh, rehabilitated. <laughs> it's illegal to keep gibbons as pets in Thailand, yet it happens all the time. Penalties for the crime are low, a maximum fine of $1,300 and almost no chance of jail time. Until the laws change, gibbons will continue to be poached from their forest homes. As highly social animals, gibbons should be living wild and free in protected areas, not living as pets, and definitely not paraded around as props. Just by going and not having your picture taken with a gibbon down in the local market, Educating other people and friends who are coming on holiday to Asia, please don't get involved with wild animals that are staged with a photographer. It's not their natural habitat, they're not happy. Most of them are living a miserable life in that existence and when they're too big to be cute, they got rid of. And this is the pieces that we're picking up here. <laughs> 